Welcome to the pre-recording of lecture 12 of MCS 481. In this lecture, we start making the connection between databases, uh, between database queries and computational geometry. At first, not obvious, uh, but as we will see as we open up chapter 5 in the textbook, this is a very natural connection. So we start by looking in a sequence of numbers stored in a balanced binary search tree, looking for ranges of numbers that are stored in a tree. And then we generalize this to two-dimensional queries. In Seagal, uh, the software that we use in this course, uh, we are fortunate that the spatial search is wrapped and therefore ready for Python programmers. And I will give a very brief um, example at the end of this lecture. OK, so let's start by defining the problem. So what is the problem? Uh, we do uh, range searches and we will define what is a range query and uh, what is the concept of a split node. So here is an example, um, or here is an example of a database query. Uh, so in a database we have stored of our employees their salary and uh, the number of children. And we want to know if within a given salary range and within a given uh, range of number of children, we want to know all these employees. So this is an example of a two-dimensional range query for which we will introduce uh, the uh, KD trees. <clears throat> okay, but let us start with a one-dimensional example. So here you see a sequence of 12 numbers um, ordered from small to large. They are stored as the leaves in a balanced binary search tree. So you see that uh, the number of levels in this tree, so trees are in this way now uh, shown um, in the conventional biological convention. So starting with the root at the bottom. Uh, you see that everything at the left of the root, the root is the number 62, everything to the left is less than 62, less than or equal. Everything to the right is larger than the number 62. Okay, um, if you have taken a course in data structures, then you know how to construct these balanced binary search trees. Uh, for us, uh, these balanced binary search trees are given. What is also given is a query range, x and x prime. Uh, so given as this interval notation with a colon separating the lower and the upper bound, separating the x with the x prime. We want to know, as a result of this query, all the numbers that are stored in the balanced binary search tree that lie inside this query range. Here is an example of a query range, the numbers 20 and 60. And um, for our example, for this sequence of 12 numbers, this consists of the numbers uh, 23, 30, 37, and 59. Now our um, <clears throat> database is stored as a balanced binary search tree. So we don't really have direct access to the numbers. We have to navigate starting at the root 62. And we see that uh, the upper bound of the query range is 60. So all the numbers that we're looking for will be at the left of 62. So in some sense, in one by one comparison, we have already eliminated uh, half of our search space, or almost half of the search space. Then we go to the left child, and we see that 23 lies inside the range. 
So we have to report the nodes that are to the left and to the right. Uh, so in particular, to the left of 23 is 10. 10 is not in the range, so we have to go to the right and we have to go to the right. And actually we find the number 23 there. So that is uh, the nodes to the left of 23. And then if you look to the right of uh, 23, we have to f get all the nodes to the left of the nodes to the right, um, or everything that is to the left. So 30, 37, and also 59. OK. Um, how do we solve this? Uh, well, we arrive at the important notion of a split node. Uh, what is a split node? Uh, that is a node for which the value lies in the range, uh, lies is larger than the first or equal to, and is less than the upper bound, strictly less. So 23 is a split node for this example. Also 37 is a split node. 30 is a split node as well. Also 59 is a split node. So these are the four split nodes that we have. So our first problem is thus to find a split node. So the input is the tree the balanced binary search tree and the query range. Um, on output, we have a split node. Now, it could also be if the if the, the, the query range does not. Uh, so we actually, we have to check the value of the node, whether that lies inside. So you see the while loop has two conditions. We stop when we arrive at the leaf. If we know that the leaf, we can look at the left and the right child. Um, we stop also when the condition on the value of the node is satisfied. Um, so this is the negation here. Uh, so if you negate the first one, you get uh, that the value is less than x prime. If you negate this one, you get that the value of the node um, is actually larger than the lower bound. So we navigate, uh, we go to the left child if the value is larger than the upper bound. Uh, then we have to, go. so this was the case when we had with the example 62. So we go to the left. And then actually in that example, we were done at 23. Otherwise, we will go to the right uh, child. And we will do so unless until we have we are at the leaf or until unless the value lies within the range satisfies these conditions. What is the cost of this algorithm? Well, it is a balanced binary search tree. It is therefore logarithmic in the total number of leaves, which is the size of the um, data set that we are storing. OK, <clears throat> um, going back to data structures, uh, so a subroutine that we will need in the algorithm is to report all the nodes that are below, or all the leaves uh, below a certain node. Um, so that is this routine report subtree. Um, and it should be doing this in order. Um, so the amount of time is proportional to the number of points that is reported. So later in the lecture, we will talk about the space occupied by a binary search tree. A very compact representation is an array representation, which if you have taken a course in data structures, you should have seen. But in some sense, this is a refresher. So here I have um, seven numbers. Um, the left child, if the if if a node is at position p, then the left child is at two p plus one. So here the left to zero is at one. The left of two 
is at position 5. Uh, so all the upper arrows are the left. So my slide somehow, perhaps I could have calibrated it better. But what is at the up, upper, the upper arrows here in this example is the left. And the lower arrows are at the right. So the right child to the root is at position 2. So you can think of seven numbers that are sorted. The middle number you, pay, you place at position zero. Then the two halves uh, of that, you also have a middle number, number. You place it at positions one and two. So for uh, three stored in this array representation, uh, define the report subtree. So it's fine if you do this in pseudocode, um, but if you have an itch, if you are a Python programmer, uh, it's perfectly fine to actually do this uh, with uh, some Python code. And if you do so, also run it on an example to demonstrate the correctness. So this is an example to get us started, to get us thinking about the data structure that is a tree. Okay, so let's uh, now solve our problem. Um, so here we have the algorithm. It starts with finding the split node. If the split node is a leaf, uh, check if the value is within the range and must be reported. Otherwise, you go to the left of the split node. And then you, uh, as long as you're not at the leaf, um, as soon as the value of the current node is actually within the range, you have to report everything that is to the right. And then you set uh, the left child is assigned then to the current node. Else you uh, go to the right child. So we first go to the right side. Uh, you check if the point stored at the current uh, node must be reported. And uh, then uh, we continue with the right child uh, to the upper bound. And also there, as soon as we are not at the leaf, we uh, look, we compare whether the current value is uh, still to the um, right side of the query. We report uh, the subtree and we continue with this setting to the right, setting to the left until we are at a leaf. So this is the algorithm defined in pseudocode, 16 steps. Um, so not seeing a tree makes this rather confusing. Uh, therefore, you should actually look back to the example and uh, follow the instructions uh, step by step. Um, so in proving the correctness, um, you must show that every point is actually in the query range is reported and in some sense that's the easy part uh, because you can always check on that uh, what is actually a little bit uh, worrisome is the report subtree um, so why don't why don't we compute too many points um, and uh, the argument is actually here sketched uh, so um, the condition is actually implied by comparing the value of the node with uh, the left uh, bound. So that's the uh, lemma. Um, the algorithm is correct. Uh, the exercise is meant uh, to slow you down a little bit. Um, and uh, the purpose of these lectures is actually that you can read the textbook. Uh, so at this point as well, uh, you should probably open the textbook and see what is explained there. The slides have the disadvantage that everything slides by. So in some sense, you should have 
multiple slides open and in some sense I should actually have done this as well um, so as you go do these steps in the algorithm um, so actually it's not possible but uh, this example should have been um, so this example here is clear for the split node um, but in some sense you should have uh, multiple windows open and uh, get an example handy okay so let me go back uh, to the uh, next step um, so we have the correctness verified um, exercise two um, we have now the cost uh, so from data structures uh, we have the result that a balanced binary search tree takes a time n log n to construct uh, similar to sorting the storage is proportional to the number of elements uh, which is obvious if you use an array representation not so obvious if you are using uh, the the pointer representation um, okay so um, these are the results from data structures now we do have an output sensitive algorithm um, finding one single number in a balanced binary search tree is logarithmic so uh, logarithmic in the size of numbers which the logarithm of n is also the depth or the height of the tree uh, but if you have to report all the points uh, then you have this lower bound of n so there is this big data uh, n that cannot be avoided so we arrived then again so we had this um, the first time we encountered an output sensitive algorithm was with the segment intersection problem here again we have that the time will be proportional to the output so we have an input consisting of the numbers x and x prime we don't know in advance how many points that are in there so k is an unknown number we don't know it in advance it belongs to the output all right uh, let us now look to two-dimensional range queries um, remember the example of the employees we have a salary range and a range on the number of children geometrically this translates into a rectangular range query the data are represented by points in the plane so for our employee we have the first important salary number and the second number is then the number of children so the x and the y coordinates so we assume that uh, nobody has uh, this no two points has the same x coordinates and no two points have the same y coordinates if that is the case we could always uh, break some ties here either by an epsilon perturbation or by some conventions all right uh, we have this uh, query rectangle x x prime y y prime four numbers and we want to select all the points for which the x coordinates and the y coordinates lie inside this range okay so the first point is uh, what is now the data structure that we will use um, that would be good for a two-dimensional range query well let's just introduce the kd tree by an example here i have eight points um, in the plane we want to do some binary search on this uh, so we take the middle point and we split uh, so we have the 
x coordinate of the uh, middle point, uh, the fourth point here, or if you like, it could be the fifth point as well. So we split uh, our data set on this middle coordinate. And then we do the same recursively, but then horizontally. We are having an alternation, so we will alternatively split on the x coordinates and on the y coordinates. So each time picking uh, the middle point. Okay, um, so we can do this um, one more time here. Um, so we have the tree now. Um, L1 is at the root. L2 and L3 are the two children of the root. And then uh, L2 has two children, L3 has two children. And this uh, separates uh, these eight points geometrically. <clears throat> and this is an example of a two-dimensional KD tree. So you see the root is the first vertical split. Uh, the two children are coming from the horizontal splits. And uh, at the third level, we have the vertical splits again. So we <clears throat> arrange the points, uh, then according to, so the leaves uh, contain the coordinates of the points. So it used to be called a 2D tree, but now it's a KD tree. Um, so, and we use a KD tree for any dimension. So the exercise three is actually for you to pick some coordinates and actually build this tree step by step. So there are three major steps in this. Uh, so one first vertical split, two horizontal splits, and then four vertical splits. Okay. Um, oops, I'm somehow misnavigated. Here is now the algorithm, so it could be formulated uh, recursively, but it is, um, so there is actually a base case. So we are um, checking whether there's only one element. Um, we have a depth, um, so we check whether we need to do a vertical or a horizontal uh, split on the data set. Um, <clears throat> so it is indeed a recursive algorithm. So you build, uh, so the splitting is done in the else case here in statements three to seven. Uh, we have the test on the fact whether the depth is even or not. And then we execute the split either vertically or horizontally. So this gives us uh, the partition of uh, P1 and P2. And then we use P1 and P2 as the left and the right um, and you can see that the depth goes up. So if we split it vertically, in the next step, we're going to split horizontally and the other way around. So this is a recursion. Build KD tree returns a tree. And we build up the tree where the nodes are the lines. The line here is either vertical or horizontal. So you can store 
this information but actually it can be stored by just uh, a number if you know the number of the layer in the tree you know whether you split it vertically or uh, horizontally so in a normal data structures course we don't really work with two-dimensional data structures like this um, but um, an exercise uh, asks you to review the algorithms that you have covered from uh, a binary search tree um, consider now the problem of modifying that tree what happens when an extra point comes in so you can uh, search where it belongs <clears throat> and what happens when you insert a data point um, what is the algorithm that you will use for an extra point uh, what happens if a point has to be deleted? Um, and important here uh, is the cost also logarithmic. Um, and then there is also the problem of maintaining the tree so that it remains balanced. Uh, this is kind of related to exercise 5.2, which is also one of the recommended activities uh, to consider after this lecture. All right. Um, <clears throat> so we kind of uh, assume that uh, the data set is already sorted, sorted first on X, then in Y. Um, actually, it's twice sorted. Uh, so you have the points, it's similar like when we look at a point set, we can very easily uh, sort the points according to their height or according to left and right. So we have actually, as a pre-processing set, we have actually sorted uh, the set uh, once on X and once on Y. So finding the middle one is then um, very quick. Uh, the cost of the split is also linear. So this then uh, gives us the following rook currents um, and uh, from discrete math uh, we actually know uh, that this uh, recurrence has n log n as a solution it's very similar to uh, merge sort by the way you split in half you sort and then you merge but now we actually we split we don't merge <clears throat> it's kind of the uh, counterpart uh, to the merge sort. Uh, it's kind of a splitting of data sets. Okay, um, and I think that is actually it, um, except that there is the important practical part in this course. Uh, there is a SIGAL that we are using for the software. Uh, whenever you, SIGAL is vast, uh, but whenever you look for something, look at the documentation in the package overview um, so here you see uh, the uh, website and the package overview if i um, show the whole page you see this is the documentation of seagull and there is this link here package seagull if you scroll down to to spatial searching and sorting then actually you see the DD uh, spatial searching and sorting and it's not really mentioning the K tree but you see the K the range search searching and you have the K nearest K, K furthest and in some sense uh, this picture here from the user manual is already indicating uh, what uh, will it's actually having it's very similar if we look now for a two-dimensional search that we will consider in the next lecture that's kind of having this window this query window in there okay so uh, the next step that then we do is uh, is this any good for us uh, well uh, we actually like uh, to program in python python is a little bit more convenient than c plus plus and you see from the wiki page of the Seagal SWIG uh, bindings, 
uh, to Python that the DD spatial searching is wrapped. Um, so only for 2D and 3D, but for our purposes, this is fine. So we shouldn't worry about this. Um, so now I have to navigate back. So here you see the, um, okay, so <clears throat> uh, I will return to this in a minute. Um, so let me now navigate to the uh, JuPyTor notebook that I have prepared. So um, it, or perhaps I should go back to the slides where I left off. Um, so we uh, looked at the user manual and actually let me click on this link, the user manual. So you see that, um, oops, I have the wrong link. I should scroll through. And here we have the user manual for DD. So this is where I want to be. So it does way more than we have covered so far, um, but we will still see a lot more. Uh, so this works for any dimension. And uh, what I want to get at is the uh, tree. So in the pre-processing stage, there is the building of a tree that is used. And somewhere we will see the notion of the, so you see the splitter that is coming here, and then also the KD tree comes in there. So we have the uh, splitting of the rules, and then there is the example, the example programs. So as a C++ programmer, this would be all we need. Uh, the search trees that are computed here are KD trees. Uh, so that is important for uh, this lecture. Okay, so in some sense, uh, I'm scrolling through this. I'm um, probably scrolling way too fast, but uh, the software design is here the KD tree. So the KD tree uh, is defined for any dimension. At the very end, we will say something at the very end of the chapter. So on Friday, so in lecture 14, uh, we will say something for this. Uh, so here you see uh, the origins for the KD tree. So you see it goes back to uh, the 70s. Um, okay, um, let me go back to, so this is the Seagull uh, definition. I already showed the wiki page, uh, so this shows that there are wrappers. And then the fourth stage, and perhaps most important stage perhaps, uh, there is an example available. Um, it's a little bit uh, subtle, test SP. So that will, uh, so if I now go to the JuPyTor notebook, you see that um, from what it imports, it imports this K uh, neighbor search tree. Also, there is this seagull underscore spatial searching. Okay, the last thing that I had prepared uh, was uh, this orthogonal incremental neighbor search. So if you take the methods that are applied in this Python script, <clears throat> and you use that to search the Seagull documentation, you can see what this orthogonal incremental neighbor search does. Okay. Now, um, what I did was uh, simply copying the code. So the code consists of two test procedures. Uh, perhaps I should run it. Uh, so we have the imports, then we have the test. And you see that I run it actually a couple of times. Um, so I inserted extra statements. 
So we have some input points. Uh, the input points are appended into a list. Um, I added uh, the printing of the points. Then there is the search tree that is constructed. So that is the pre-processing st step. And the default search tree is actually a KD tree. We can list all the points in the tree. So in some sense, uh, the output to this test script uh, twice the same. So this is kind of a sanity check. And then we search. Um, so we search for the neighbors, the nearest neighbors of the point zero 02. So we do find the point zero 02. And then we find also the other points. And there is an extra number that comes after that. And that should be the square of the Euclidean distance. So the point zero 04 lies at the square of the Euclidean distance 16. That is what I infer from that. <clears throat> so this is a neighbor search. So this is a geometrical search, not really a range query. So we will get into range queries in the next uh, lecture. So in some sense, this is a first step on how you construct a KD tree for dimensions two and three. So here is the three dimensional uh, test example. Um, so this will also construct the tree and then uh, do the searches for the point um, starting at the point zero, zero, zero. So in some sense, uh, this is an other ordering that is built uh, very related to the range searches, but uh, more geometrically searching for the nearest points. Okay, so we have the point and also the other. So what is returned each time by the iterator is in the first, uh, the point, and then we have this square of the Euclidean distance that is uh, reported. Okay, so you see the search, it took some searching in the documentation, but once you find uh, what is related, uh, executing is quite efficient. Okay, so let me now go back to the end. So I'm close to 40 minutes. So what have we done? Uh, we have connected database queries to geometrically to geometrical data structures. Um, in some sense, this connects back to what we have encountered in a data structures course. In some sense, also with the KD tree, we are asking the same questions on how to update a binary search tree, um, the KD tree that we have seen. So look at these exercises. Um, some of them will be collected. Um, we covered the beginning of chapter five in our textbook and we looked at the example code. Um, so the, these KD trees can also be used for uh, other geometrical queries that are being made. Okay, I hope that this pre-recording did not go too fast. Um, the lectures are budgeted for 50 minutes. But the exercises are meant for slowing you down so you can pause the pre-recording and also kind of consult uh, the textbook while uh, the slides are sliding by. So I won't stretch this, stretch this any further. Um, in the next lecture, we will talk about range queries, um, more on how to make these range queries, um, and then look further into uh, chapter five of the textbook. <clears throat>